Notebook on Cities and Culture's Korea Tour is brought to you by Daniel Murphy, David Hayes, and Polar Inertia Journal, an outlet for artists and researchers documenting the urban condition at polarinertia.com. Do you find you think any differently when you're discussing space, the use of space in English versus in Korean? Oh, absolutely. Mm, yes. How different? Let's say we like some piazza in Rome and just reconstruct exactly the same uh, in Seoul. Mm. I think that happens all the time, in fact. Mm. Maybe in China also. It will feel completely different because the uh, you know, the social cultural practice is very different, and the way we use a space is very different. Mm -hmm. How we engage, uh, how we create private bubble, maybe the size of the bubble, no. uh, all that various matter. I mean, you experience that, mm. so it will feel completely different. Mm. Yes. What stands out to you as a difference? You know, why, 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 why is it more? Why does it make more sense to talk about copying a building in Italy? Exactly. When you're talking about it in Korea, when you're talking about it in Korean, does it? Why does it make more sense than to say that in an English-speaking context? Because I think it's uh, copying is also one way of uh, creating in a way, mm -hmm. especially when you cross different cultures and borders. Mm -hmm. And because uh, it was so much about actually uh, whether it was intended or not, uh, it was uh, so much about. Uh, misinterpretation or misuse mm. which made it also uh, much more interesting and kind mm. of it's diver divergent way I think the the recent few decades of Korean I mean especially Seoul the urban explosion so much happened has a lot to do with that mm. you know? it's there's a great strength in mutating something mm. Mm. And it is here in Seoul, South Korea. We sit today on Notebook on Cities and Culture. I'm Colin Marshall, speaking today in the offices of Mass Studies, the architectural firm founded by my guest today, Min Sok Cho. Recently, he also received the Golden Lion Award at the Venice Biennale for the Korean Pavilion at that exhibition. I want to ask more about that, but first, tell me about this explosion in building in Seoul. Yes. When, what are your memories of, of when this explosion really began for you? Uh. Okay, as it goes all the way back, I was born in 66. So my, I think my ch uh, earliest memory is 1970. Mm -hmm. It was on the other side of the mountain mm -hmm. when Seoul was expanding. At that time, most of the Seoul was, I mean, I think it was technically the northern part, mm -hmm. which is about 620 years now. And um, 40 years ago, it was, uh, started to expand this other south, uh, southern part. I think it's about, we, we, we grew about tenfold fold over the last 50 years. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. That's pretty, I mean, when you, when you look back 100 years ago, it was only 100,000 people. Right. So 100 times growth. So tenfold, I mean, in the, in the last 50 years, that means that in, your, in the span of your memories, you have seen most of this growth. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I missed the just after the war, 1953. Right. Yeah, the first uh, you know decade or so, I missed it. Right. But uh, most. most. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Tell me about the soul of your childhood. How different was it? It, it was. Uh, it was fascinating because uh, so at the, I was able to swim in Han River. Mm. Well, there was there was a beach there. Where where was the beach? Uh, just just some edges, mm. and it was a lot. I mean, there, we we had you know season like that now. You know, mm. we have monsoon season. Mm. Um, things got flooded. Mm. We were actually we when I was a kid, uh, I was I was I was born in a small house, but which is near here. But I, we had to move to um, because my father was bankrupt, so we mm. had to move to this new, very modern apartment, mm. five story, no elevator, walk up, fifth floor. Mm. Which was very long. Actually, it was like, like it's like a concrete utopia. <laughs> and uh, we were actually, although we, we our parents were devastated by uh, the, the situation they're in, but we were just we we're in heaven. Why was it so good? Because it was big and mm. uh, a completely new world. It was just mm. I think I just loved the abstract sort of a concrete room, nothing but concrete with mm. sky, and that mm. become like a. I mean, there's no even play structure, but it was like right. a great playground. And, 
Good. So on. And this was a this was a five story building. Yes. You said yeah. now, it's like three hundred meter long. I so, see. Like, so each floor has like uh, thirty units. Right. Yeah. I think our house uh, were like up to like ten people living in there because we were we were with the, my mother's sister's family uh, at a certain point with the grandmothers and it was actually fantastic. It was like almost like a village, mm. vertical village. So I think you see a lot of that in China also because mm. the way people lived. Uh, make the, just before that, we were in this small, much more horizontal situation with right. alleyways, and alleyways are always this great uh, sort of a space for, to interact, mm. although we didn't have this kind of a sort of institutionalized public space. Mm. But in, just naturally, activities happen, and kids yeah. running. I mean, you still see that some of, you know, this area in the back alley, mm. but... Um, and then we just uh, somehow moved to this completely modern environment. It become almost like a Pac-Man. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's the corridor is yes. always filled with the kids running around right. with boundaries. And I mean, I, I practically re remember all these like, numbers. My friends visiting third floor, fourth floor, mm. and it was actually much more. Uh, it was a beautiful experience actually. Of course, it quickly went away oh, yes. because it just become a very different type of apartment right. where the corridor disappear and with elevators, and it only gets uh, taller and taller now up to uh, the eighty story tall mm, and. Yes. I mean, it's very common that you don't know where your uh, your next door neighbor is, right? right yeah, right. it's it's all become I don't know what what you call it the the individual privacy things like that. And yes, I've, I've I've been in many of that type of many of those such buildings when I since I've come to Korea, the very tall ones, you know, the very tall thin ones. Those are what people I think foreigners think about when they think of Seoul as yeah, these yeah. clusters of ten, twenty, thirty. Yeah. 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 story concrete High buildings. Density, right. Uh, gated community. Mm. Yeah. When did those begin appearing? It's, uh, it's a, from, I mean, that, that moment when I start uh, living in this modern environment, it was the early 70s, and that moment, very briefly, they had a quickly uh, exper experimentation of different typologies mm. um, and uh, various forms. And then quickly there was, I don't know, I think there, there must be some conspiracy and mm. uh, with, together with, the, I think, the very strong um, leader, mm. dictatorship, yes, of course. together with the Jebel mm. group, and they somehow decide to make, quickly produce middle class happy mm. by having this modern environment. And I think the fastest, maybe the easiest way was to uh, create a new half and right. build a... Uh, the sameness, like mm. five million apartments in the next five years, things like that. Mm. I mean, they did it. Thank God there was like this really uh, a state control economic system at work and two digit growth for a couple of decades. Mm. Yeah, that's where we are. Now. I mean, for me, it's, it's very interesting. For me, as a sort of architect, uh, my generation is, I think, it's a very interesting generation because. My previous one, their childhood memories about small houses, villages, and favelas, what you call it. But then, I, I, I'm the one who's, I think, start to have that kind of early childhood mem memories. But mm -hmm. the the younger ones came up to me. They grew up in a very different environment. Right. Not like this in-between third world, quickly transplanted into this very modern environment, which mm -hmm. still had, a, I think, a lot more... Uh, human maybe or mm. not other social uh, sort of a richness mm. uh, later it become quite i mean maybe they'll defy that but it's i think it's quite uh, now it's almost i think it's orwellian oh, much more corporate control you know these these are branded apartments right right you know, yes you can see that on the side of yeah, them yeah samsung hyundai every major lg every major corporation comes with that and when you turn on the tv you'll see a lot of those tv ads which is very korean mm. there's about more than 100 apartment brands right. in competition it's something we don't really know about in, this, in, the, in America, apartment brands. Yeah, yeah exactly, yes. exactly. Mm. You have a Samsung apartment, you can ring, you can have a chime, like a logo song. Oh, ding, my. Ding, ding. <laughs> <laughs> wow, this is... Good or bad? I, it's, it's something. It's something interesting. It's something. And how long, how long did life last in your concrete utopia of your childhood? Concrete utopia, interesting, because that's the title of the book, very influential book by this young uh, design critic, but it's a fantastic book. You know about this one? I don't think I know about this book. I recommend it. Mm. Uh, maybe there's another motivation to learn further Korean yes. for you. It's a fantastic uh, sort of a uh, history of apartment. 
generation by generation, he made very clear definition. Mm-hmm. Uh, how long did it last? I was there until about seven or eight years, so mm-hmm. sort of a mid a junior high school. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Elsewhere, I read that you decided to become an architect after discovering a book that your father had. Do you remember what book that was? <sighs> uh, yeah, good research. I, my father is an architect, obviously, and uh, yeah, he always, always had a books just around our house, and mm. yeah, I think it was there are many actually, mm. like A plus U, Shingen Chiku. Uh, it could have been one of those journals. Japanese, yes. Yeah, but also I think we had. I, I, I remember clearly seeing the Le Corbusier's Rongshan Church, mm. and at that time, my primary school time, I wanted to be an ar- ar- artist because. I was quite good at making things and, mm-hmm. you know, little clay sculptures and things like that. Wow, this is like a cool <laughs> sp- cooler than, I mean, it's big, you know. Yes, yes, yes. Daddy, why didn't you tell me this? You're doing the cool thing. You know? <laughs> he was never pushing me into anything, so, which ah, I, I appreciate, see. yeah. It's the opposite of the complaints I hear from Korean friends about their parents. Usually they say, yeah. they pushed me too far, or I wanted to be an architect, and they said no. My, my, my father had, that's exceptional. I'm mm. very uh, thankful for that, because typically when your son, my father, wants to be an artist, they will say, why don't you become an architect? Mm. But for him also, he already had a couple of bankruptcies. Oh, it was a very roller coaster, and oh. somehow he thought, because also he knew some very significant artists at the time, so he said, if you succeed in art, probably you'll have a better life. Mm. And he, he was a much more informed person, and mm. he doesn't have this typical uh, value system of that generation. Mm. Had. Yeah. Mm. Now, uh, as, you, as you say, the generation, your generation, the ones born in the 1960s, yeah. saw so much change, yes. and lived th- had they lived in, in, in a state of change almost the whole time growing up, and... I want to know, when you saw everything changing around you as a kid, especially in the built environment, were you seeing buildings in Seoul that fascinated you about architecture, or was this all, is this all in the sort of, I mean, was it, was it in the foreign world that architecture was interesting you through these books your father had, or was anything happening in Korea, in Seoul, that made you think, I want to do that? Um... No, I- initially I think it was much more sort of artistic interest. Mm. But then later, as I started to study, in, you know, understand more about it, it's also the element of the social element is much mm. more, I mean, significant part of it. Mm. And these uh, form, form giver role is, you know, in a way, just one way to get there. It's not mm. the goal itself. You know, mm-hmm. as in many other things, I think that involves with the civilization. Mm-hmm. So uh, I think it brings more weight to what we do mm-hmm. than just putting a cherry on cake right. type of things. Right. So um, yeah, so that's. Mm-hmm. I think I, I, I so we're we're so very interested in um, making decent buildings mm-hmm. that people care and mm-hmm. goes beyond the average like ex- expect expectancy of Korean building, which right. is 30 years. Yes, it's incredible. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. incredible. it's just toilet paper, basically. Yeah? <laughs> I was so, yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah, but I think uh, a lot of it is also the, the whole, uh, the light within. That's, that's what kind of... I mean, I remember somebody showing me, I was interviewing somebody who writes about Korean urbanism, and he pointed up to a building it was, an, it was just an apartment building, and he said that building is 25 years old, and it looked like it was about to collapse on its own. Yeah. People were living in it, but it seemed like when people see photos of North Korea, it looked like it could have been there, and it was only 25 years old. North Korea had better design and better color scheme. North Tell Korea me. has better design and better color scheme? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Right. Yeah. Why do they have that? It's, it's, I mean, South Korea had its own sort of a state control within the capitalist system, mm. especially back in the 60s and 70s, maybe even 80s. But that's uh, North Korea. There's no private mm. interest, not, you know, I mean, there's no, um, uh, even department store is public building. Right. Yeah, everything is for public. Mm purely c- constructed by a uh, sort of state ideology, mm. at least on the paper. Uh, mm. So, um, yeah, I mean, this, so it's really architecture is a tool there to mm. encourage and, it, as a collective. Yeah. Mm. Do you think that the way that Seoul was building these last few decades, bigger, cheaper, mm. more? Faster. Faster, bigger, cheaper, more, faster. Was that, is that, is that now a motivation 
any way for you to go smaller, slower, more considered? Is it to do the opposite? That's very interesting because I have a theme about that actually.、Mm. For me, bigger, faster, cheaper was kind of a, it was almost default mode, especially before the、uh, 2008、mm-hmm. recession, the Lehman, all that, the, the global scale. And、uh, earlier on, I started math studies 2003, and that was uh, uh, before. Before bur- the big bubble burst, so we had a lot of opportunities,、uh, and we were very carefully choose this kind of a, a default mode projects.、Mm-hmm. The larger building, largest building over there,、uh, what we call missing matrix,、mm-hmm. was one example、mm-hmm. to deal with the bigness. Also within the relatively short time frame, it wasn't the fastest project, but、mm-hmm. what we can do with it. And、mm-hmm. so、um, we had a what we call,、uh, you know, how the Letterman had a stupid pet trick. Yes, yes. We 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 consider ourselves like a stupid human trick, and <laughs> you know, how we kind of trap into it and、right. do something,、uh, mm-hmm. a sort of like alternative、uh, way.、Yeah. Mm-hmm. The, the 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 missing matrix building was about typically when architect build larger building. With decent money because it was it was very、uh, looks supposedly the luxurious apartment,、mm-hmm. uh, but usually they make very simple typical floor plan、mm-hmm. and they just duplicate. Doesn't、right. matter, it's a thirty story, eighty story, <laughs> over and over and over and over again. And that's how they make、uh, money. In、right. fact, yeah, the surplus is created.、Right. But it was、uh, we were quite early on. We got this opportunity. It was like maybe it was behind my head. We didn't maybe we didn't want to become quickly rich. <laughs>、mm-hmm. right. So what if we proportion、uh, increase the size together with the complexity? Right. So,、uh, because it usually goes like this, as、mm-hmm. the building gets bigger, it gets、uh, the simpler and more、mm-hmm. repetition. But、nice. what if it just the complexity is just <laughs> as a sort of small house scale?、Mm-hmm. So we end up, and of course it was it takes a it takes two to do something in architecture,、mm-hmm. and we, it was like we couldn't believe our client was so up for it. Right, they just said okay. Yeah, go for it. I think、no、that's, that's interesting <laughs> idea because I think also they were just. They try to find this desperately、uh, to sell this and have some good uh, uh, what do you call it、uh, special things going on in the building、mm. and how so that they can market it. So all of a sudden、mm. they're like, oh, we're not selling mass produced product. Right, we're we're showing like like a custom made. <laughs> so this building is has a hundred seventy nine units, but it has like forty nine types. But、uh-huh. each one also comes with five different. Finish the material variations.、Oh, I see.、It's, so no, a, no two are totally the same. It's, so it's almost almost each one is different.、Mm. So it's, it's, that's why we expanded from twelve people to forty people、oh, in two years.、Mm. So、um, I think we did something for increasing the job.、Right. <laughs> well. <laughs> Probably like big corporations, they probably like have like five people working. Like we had like twenty people working on one project.、Mm. So、um, of course we almost got bankrupt actually. Oh really?、Uh, thank、wow. thank God that our client sold it like like this. Yes. It was big success. So they pay us more、uh, more so that we can continue and finish our detailed、mm. drawings. So、mm. that was a one test. Another one that faster, bigger, cheaper with it was、um, for the Shanghai Expo Korean Pavilion.、Mm. Which was very interesting, also, because we were one of the biggest pavilion among 200、mm-hmm. countries. It was like the single most number of na- nation participated.、Mm-hmm. Everybody wants to be ch- I mean, friends with China, of right, course, of including course. North Korea. <laughs> but the、um, the bigness somehow. But our country not only took the biggest side, but also they wanted to spend the least amount of money. Of course. And then, of course, and then they because they had this such I mean typical goes on same thing, but lame.、Uh, Parliament congressmen, they didn't、uh, approve the budget until the last minute. So we had a shortest、uh, amount of time.、Uh, so we had those triple,、uh, the troublesome givens, and somehow we jumped in to、uh, use that、uh, situation to our benefit.、Mm. And I think we ended up doing that. So that was, I mean, it's just gonna be a long story, but we are quite、uh, happy at the end. I mean, of course, I don't want to revisit it.、Right. But then, as you said. Simultaneously, at a certain point, it was actually before recession.、Mm. We had an instinct that we don't. I mean, this will go on not forever, and、mm. so we were、uh, slowly shrink ourselves down. We're actually like twenty-five people now,、ah. and、um, 
which was very good instinct. Uh, and um, we were simultaneously explaining what you exactly said. Smaller, slower, not the most expensive, but decent mm. <laughs> budget mm. project that matters longer period of time. And mm. um, yeah, I mean, there's, we're still simultaneously interested in both. Mm. I think this region, I mean, I cannot speak for the entire region, but Seoul really, I think, uh, give us uh, really rich, uh, diverse uh, opportunities for architects to explore. Mm -hmm. uh, and obviously our goal is we're not trying to do business as usual and create further redundancies to, you know, what other people are doing, mm -hmm. most people are doing. So um, we to bring out a few things. I mean, instead of, again, being verbal, you know, mm -hmm. that's what we do. That's how the kind of thing that we find a role in our field here. What does it mean for Seoul? How does it affect Seoul that there's so much building up against so much nature? I think that's a blessing, mm. don't you think? I think so. It makes it distinctive. But what do you think it... What, uh, why, why is it so... Why is it such a blessing? Uh, yeah, let's say that. Uh, yeah, it's 620 years ago, as I said. It was a planned city. Mm. New Kingdom, he hired say, Feng Shui master mm. to look around the entire peninsula, find the best spot. Of course, this worked perfectly with mm. mountain, four cardinal point, mm. Deity Mountain, with the southern river, which becomes central river, now Han River, because mm. it was only northern half, as I said. Mm. And But that was small kingdom, right? The, the new capital, um, which was less than a million hundred years ago. And, uh, but it's so it was it was where most people live in the valley and then you know very close to nature and mostly it's a one story building basically wooden structure mm. but then this uh, hundredfold uh, the quantity grows uh, somehow it has to confront the nature and i think it's a very unique case as a large metropolitan city that confronts this uh, abundance of nature mm. it's, it's 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 actually it's kind of intermingled right yes. as you can see our office is that way right, right. it's like uh, back at least a seven-story building but from the main street it's a two-story building we're kind of uh, trapped in between mm. because it's slow and um yeah so um i think uh, it just came out of the totally uh unplanned byproduct unexpected way mm. yeah but I love the what uh, I can enjoy here. Mm. Like, for example, last weekend, me and my colleague, she's been uh, uh, practicing very good uh, water skiing. Oh, yes. So I first tried it with her and other people. Mm -hmm. God, that's very tough. But it's, <laughs> it's actually, I was so shocked at how close it is. It's just across the street where, like, Central, there's a department store just behind it. You just, right. uh, there's a small uh, sort of floating building there. And uh, it's, it's a, I mean, it's all hard, the way you experience the city. I mean, that was actually my main motivation. Yes. Yeah? And I, I'm, I'm happy to do that again. Or, or um, all around the mountains. It's, uh, I think this, again, that's why so 20, 10 years ago, even there wasn't, there weren't really um, designed public space mm. like plazas and things like that. Mm. I think also has to do with the dark sort of uh, regime military dictatorship time uh, they didn't want people to gather I see. Right? so once you make this plaza in a way i think this whole i don't know if you know this uh, gold uh, world cup fever 2002 mm -hmm. the whole red devils yes. taking over street that was the first time where we demonstrated that the massive gathering right. in public space can be also about euphoria and massive mm -hmm. happiness, not the massive anger, which is right. which become our modern oh, tradition, uh, yes. uh, which are very very proud of, by yes. the way. So I think that's when. So it's only ten years. I, it's just around the time when I came back. So this mm -hmm. start to like make small uh, plazas and things like that. Mm -hmm. But the reason why we are able to s sort of uh, survive through so much. Like hard working, uh, hardcore work ethics, and the density, one of the densest city, all that is because we have those mountains. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. It's, um, I mean, summertime, with, I, I have, all my close friends are like uh, mountain, mountain freaks, oh, I see. like rock climber types. And oh. we, we just go and we, some of us just drive and pick up some chicken on the road. And then uh, we just go to creek, like we just park the car. Like it's like a Yosemite, mm. more beautiful, I think, even mm. in a way. And then you just walk like 
20 minutes with the, this light, uh, minus light, uh, mm. just real. And then you're in this most beautiful, like, ice cold creek and mm. we swim and drink beers and mm. yeah, things like that. I don't think any, any city, there's not many cities that can mm. offer that kind of a, almost simultaneous. But this city really needs like a good manual how to use this. Huh. A lot of people don't know that. Really? Yeah. They don't know how to use the city? Even people who grow up here? Yeah, because they're falling into these traps. Almost wow. people spend like an hour and a half, two hours just commuting because right. they have to buy this status quo mm -hmm. apartment, Samsung apartment, whatever. If they, they cannot afford so they invented this suburbia, which is mm -hmm. even denser and newer mm -hmm. high-rise towers. And of course, they have same shopping malls, but mm. and then their work is in Seoul, so right. they, I mean, they, they spend so much time in a way like LA. Yes, yes, yes. I don't like LA, I'm, uh -huh. by the way. I think the city, if somebody feels handicapped not being uh, not a driver. It, I don't uh, have a car. That's great. I, you're the second person that I know. <laughs> Just so you, you use subway? Yeah, and bike, and bus. I know, like, uh, that's, that's, I have one. Oh, that's, that's very admirable of you. That's, that's amazing. Whenever I go to uh, L.A., I remember a couple of years ago, that was the last time I was there, mm -hmm. my friend was getting married at this, where is that desert? Oh, there's Palm Springs. Yes. They were getting married there, and I, I just grabbed a cab from the airport, mm -hmm. spent $300, yellow cab. Wow. <laughs> same guy came. It's like, <laughs> same, same guy. It's like, I, I can come back to pick you up. <laughs> so I was just cabbing the whole time. <laughs> no, but like, like me, that's also how, how I live. It's just like a five minutes walking distance. Everything around is just walking distance within mm -hmm. 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. I think it's, I think because such a big city, I think you need to find a way to kind of have a sense of, intimacy and scales and, and so on. Right. Of course, you know, we can, I go, I take taxi, which is abundant. It's not like LA, you know, mm -hmm. it's almost as cheap as public transportation it system is, here. Yeah. And uh, you don't have to worry about also parking spot everywhere you go. I, I don't know why people pick that sort of a lifestyle. It's just- I don't like, know either. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but that's, that's. I mean, you're, you're more hardcore than me. I'm uh, very uh, impressed. Yeah. Well, it's not that hard, but here's the difference. Uh, first of all, I'll say, of course, you're absolutely right about Seoul needing a manual sometimes. The same thing with Los Angeles is true. It, okay. it needs a manual or else you fall into that lifestyle, the same, the equivalent that you describe. But with Los Angeles, it's, uh, it's a city that is strangely still being built in a fundamental way. For example, the transit system is still being built. It's, in a way, it's still taking shape, which is why it's interesting to me. Do you, think, do you consider Seoul a city that's still taking shape? Yeah, mm. I think so. But uh, it's kind of a, I, I call it a, we're just kind of passing our juvenile teenager phase, mm. which means we have lots of energy. I mean, of course, it's an old city right. and has strong identity, but over the last 50 years, it's transformed, it exploded so much. Mm. So it's like body's grown so quickly. Mm. But of course, uh, you know, teenagers, they make so many mistakes and right. with so much energy and, yes. yeah. But Slowly, also this recession somehow, I see that as also a positive thing. Mm. Although we architects are losing, a lot of us losing jobs. Right, right, uh, right. But uh, there's, I mean, it's really a, a first time I think significantly we're just like really slowing down and mm. reflect on what we do, what we can learn from it, and so mm. on. So, um, in a way, I think it's better than. And also, it's, it's it's a good preparation because I I, I know there will be a s soon it's all it's very easily foreseeable other social changes, mm. meaning population shrinkage, oh, aging, and things like that. Right. So we are in a roller coaster case of what Europeans went through during during the modernization process. Maybe over the last 150 years, mm. we're doing it like in like crash course 30 years in a row. Right. Yeah? I mean, I grew up as a kid that was a campaign against making too many babies oh yes now now yeah oh now the birth rate like, is so low and raised well now it's like it's it's like less than uh war the, like the lowest of any european developed nation mm. it's like 1.1.1 1. 1. 1. 1.2 wow. something like that yeah mm. it's not i mean they don't know what to go what to do with the schools now Mm -hmm. huh? These empty schools. I mean, close only so much artist residency you can create. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right, right, uh, right. Now, you've, you describe, as you say, teenagers make mistakes. 
Yeah, and there's it's forgivable. It's I'm, I'm very uh, magnanimous about my what's what's happening here. I mean, I'm an yes. architect. I cannot be negative, you know. In a way, though, I can consider both Seoul and Los Angeles as teenagers in different ways, making different mistakes. Mm -hmm. Los Angeles made the mistake of thinking it could do without density, which it then realized it couldn't, and so now it's turning dense, mm -hmm. belatedly. What what is the equivalent mistake that Seoul made as a teenager? Mm -hmm. There are many things because it is dense. It didn't. It didn't think it could get by without density. But I think this whole density was something maybe if it was unavoidable, mm -hmm. because it, there was whole entire uh, fifty years. What also has happened was uh, all the farmers moved to Seoul. Right, mm -hmm. it used to be eighty percent farmers. Now eighty percent urban yes. ratio. Um, I think this apartment, it was a, the whole typology was a real big mistake because mm -hmm. it's the biggest chunk of the, the development during this time. I think what, when, you, when you compare to Hong Kong, which is even denser, I think as a city, I think it's much more fascinating. Mm. Although the, what's happening on this sort of suburb of Hong Kong, which is around there, mm -hmm. uh, that's very similar to Seoul, but mm -hmm. the sort of central Hong Kong, when you see these crazy high-rise buildings, but it doesn't work like a gate is gated community, mm. they still has this uh, sort of urban, sort of cohesive uh, right. quality that is, I think, is uh, one specific I can mention. Mm. But um, what else? What other mistakes? I mean, we, also, we didn't have to take down all these uh, uh, villages. Mm. Uh, I mean, now only the remaining few area become like the fetish, you know? Yes, of so course. It, I mean, it all looks like this charming old wooden structure, but turn into like this collectible, like antique car collectors. Collectible hammock. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> With, like antique uh, yeah, cars or, yeah, they all turn into like very expensive wine bars and mm. things like that. So it's somehow they maintain the appearance, but it becomes completely something else, you know? Mm. Mm. Yeah. Now, I want to. I want to get. That's all the car, car driven, the car driven development here. Yeah. Mm. Where I Where is it happening? The way we design tower, like has a minus seven story underground parking. Oh yes. Yeah. I mean, we can run like New York, but I mean, this country really had drive drive the through these uh, industries, right? Mm. The Hyundai cars yes, become course. very important parts. So every regulation, like even if you don't need your own house car, you have to have this certain per square meter <laughs> how many cars, you know. Yes. This thing you have to you know, I think that really kills the street. It yeah. happened in America because after World War we learn so much from America. Yeah. The Japanese don't do that. European I mean but yeah. look at look at New York. Yeah. I mean these high rise buildings they don't have this massive um, the, 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 the iceberg below mm -hmm. for the car. Older buildings don't use, of course, but for obvious reasons they don't have them. But let's talk about New York because you studied in New York. How, how much time had you spent outside Korea before studying in New York? No. None? I mean, I had like a one month Europe tri trip, uh, like a language trip, I uh, what they call, yeah. just mm. one winter. Yeah. So New York was the first time you'd lived outside Korea, and what? It's a straight up the boat. I yeah. see. I see. <laughs> how did how did the when you got there? I mean, how did the what differences struck you as immediately fascinating or surprising or exciting about New, the way? New York was amazing. Mm. I was literally like, like. Walking like a cartwheel. I mean, uh, so ecstatic. It was uh, uh, New York. I think it's uh, just has amazing absorptive, absorptive uh, mm. quality, mm. which is a powerful. You, I just fit right in. I feel like I just fit right in. Although I didn't understand the, the language, or uh, it was actually I had a much harder time to adjust to um, coming back to Korea after oh, fourteen really? years. Yeah, because I guess. By then, I was mid thirties. I was already grown. Maybe my brain got a lot less softer, <laughs> and but also Seoul has changed so much. It right. felt like a foreign country. Right. So yeah. it was it was more different than New York was to you initially. Yeah, yeah. Mm. New, New York was the most ex most inviting experience. Another move was from New York to Rotterdam. Yes. That I couldn't really fit in. Like after three years, you know, I had right. to leave. Yeah. I mean. The work experience is fantastic, but mm. I could have stayed much longer if that whole, I don't know what it is, but has to do with the flatness. 
I think I think by nature I, I'm like interested in mountains and living mm. in valley. But New, New, York, New, New York is uh, also yeah. like an artificial mountain and valley. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. true. And also it's kind of narcissistic city in a way. So <laughs> and in you know, New York also, because mm. they don't get to see the rest of the world. I mean, right. of course you get outside, but like you're just trapped by your own beauty. You know, mm. Mm. Uh, Rotterdam is very opposite, right? Mm. That's why <laughs> Dutch people tra travel so much. One third of the economy is driven by trade and. Yeah. Look mm. at Mr. Ren Kohas. Mm, yes, indeed. Well, yeah, I mean, you, you someone you know. <laughs> yes, yeah, certainly. Perfectly, uh, perfect uh, practice, uh, his practice, perfect Dutch practice, because you've got to get out to live there uh, mm. constantly. Uh, mm. So it's a bit different. Uh. People don't have to get out necessarily. Uh, I mean, I was always, uh, I remember the like, first experience uh, where the office was on seventh floor, and when, on a good clear day, because it's mostly cloudy there, right? It's just, you see the entire map of Holland. Oh, yes, the whole thing. It's like a little wizard of oars uh, <laughs> here and there. <laughs> and of course you want to go. Right. And the weather is terrible, so I mean, mm. you, you want to see the, the rest of the world. Mm. I think it's also this whole topography condition really uh, does something to mm. the people, mm. the local, the, the quality, the mentality. Yeah. Were you always thinking you would return to Korea? No, or no, 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 never. no. I was very determined to not to come back to Korea, actually. Oh, yeah. What made you want to return? It wasn't out of wanting, actually. Mm. It was uh, where were, when, I had a, when I left Rotterdam and I moved back to New York. To, I started my practice together with my classmate from Colombia, mm. James Slade, which is also my best friend, and um, my surrogate family in New York also. But uh, we were both frustrated uh, that, you know, America, it's had a very different economic status. And the role archi that architects require is they're in a way way ahead of Korea. Mm. Maybe the here, maybe it's comparable to America just mm. before oil crisis or something. Nice. There's just so much to do. Yeah. And also the economy system, as you know, it's just ever more polarizing. Mm. So you either you have this small let's say hipster, small uh, atelier practice, doing very important like, project, doing galleries and loft designs, very mm. overly thought out door handles and beautiful details course, and so on. Yeah, but there's, there's more to it. So we're frustrated to do some projects uh, really like a significance, but then it, the opportunity wasn't there. So we try many times, but so we end up and this small building, which was a small house. Mm -hmm. So I came here, let's do a little house mm -hmm. and come back, mm -hmm. go back to New York. But then it followed by yes. it's a little bit larger, larger, <laughs> and then kind of happily got stuck there. So here, so I um, decided also it was, I didn't like the idea of returning because mm -hmm. I kind of like to have continuing moving right. forward progress. But then I realized this place is actually quite different. So, uh, as I said, those not the country you two years that they, it took it, it took the length that of time that made me decide to come back to Korea. Mm. So mm. once I did it, then twelve years ago, yeah, this is where I'm at. Why did it become so much better a place to build things here, Korea? Yeah, well, it's, it's still there's. Um, I mean, at the time, also twelve years ago, there's still um, stronger economy. Right. And also, I think it's a country that recently accomplished where we are. Mm. And there's also a lot of people who wants to express it through architecture. Mm. Or there's, you know, architecture become much more significant sort of a tool, mm. in a way, mm. than just uh, embellishment of something. Mm. And also, it, it the role is the required for architect, I think, Still, I mean, we are. That's globally, we are trapped by this whole economic system, and, mm. and but um, and public the disappearance of public and so on. But mm. uh, I think I've been very lucky to meet this uh, very uh, interesting clients uh, who's willing to explore and mm. adapt new things and so on. So. One of the buildings that architecture fans might know mass studies from would be the Pixel House in yes. Paju. You have that model there. 
Oh, it's it's there the model. Ah, uh -huh. literally, I put that pixel one pixel bit. I did it myself. Oh, really? So like by hand. hand. <laughs> <laughs> That's when I had too much time. What's I, I went to Paju recently, okay. and I was looking around, and it feels so different from any other place I've been in in Korea. Paju. It's north of Seoul, of course, but what's why? What is what is Paju for somebody who's Paju, never there's never a Paju book city in the Heri Heri Art Valley. Right. This was a result of mid nineties. Um, the president Kim Dae Jung, okay. uh, sort of a, who made a breakthrough. I mean, he got no peace Nobel Peace Prize for that because just after the war, as you can see, the south of Seoul, everything was sort of downwards mm -hmm. because of the fear of the war, or there's also. The dramatic tension. A lot of it is, I think, is also the fabrication of fear. Yes. That is so much was driven mm -hmm. that way. But um, all of a sudden, some people, especially the progressive people, mm -hmm. start to see encouraged by this improved uh, situation with North mm -hmm. Korea, which was named as a sunshine policy time. Mm -hmm. That I mean, most people. I so I think a lot of people at that time maybe that that was crazy, mm -hmm. but there was a lot developed by Paju City. Mm -hmm. So who's going to come in? So these um, quite socially conscious uh, people with uh, publication and cultural production people. There's some good leaders like the publication company uh, president and so on, mostly from the liberal side, and they sort of decide, okay, let's be mm -hmm. courageous and start a new village. Uh, mm. Peacefully, close mm. to PMC, you know, and mm. and so the two things came out that way. Yeah. Right, you can see North Korea from parts of Paju. It's it's I mean, they're they're first beneficiaries of you know when my Pixel House client when I, when they first moved in there was so that was two thousand three. And when they first move in, they were still hearing the propaganda. Oh, over the, uh, over the loudspeakers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Both sides, from both sides. Yeah, but then they, the at that point, they, it's, it's, but right away they decide to quit, mm. have peace together. Mm. So they were like very happy to mm. see the good, good positive change. I mean, now it's also a different story, right? But uh, it's. Um, that just seems like a place where there's a lot of architectural freedom, though, because there's so much space and things like that, right? It's sort of a, it was a blank slate or blank canvas, wasn't it, at yeah. the beginning? Yes, yes. Mm. But you, 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 did you see the Pixel House? I haven't seen it myself, no, not, I wasn't in you, person there. You just went to Paju. Right, we, I was yes, in and around Paju. He has yeah. two of these developments, one which is a Paju book city, right. which we're engaging, mm -hmm. and also right now, and then Haiti Art Valley. Right. And the Paju book city is kind of designated as an industrial zone. So that's where all the Paju right. uh, book uh, book publication companies and distribution center, printing fact plants, and common facilities there, and much more uh, flat and larger territory. Haiti Art Valley, is, uh, it was actually essentially a residential area, right. even up north. I mean, five minutes distance by car, but um, Haiti Valley was kind of a, not a typical type of rasa. Typically, they kind of wipe out the territory and right. uh, flatten, and they just build it like they try to be Dutch, let's say. Right. But this one, they kind of keep the five mountains there, yeah, small yeah, mountains, and uh, become a quite unique thing. Of course, um, there's a very uh, it's in a, in a way, it's kind of fascinating case study. I think because you would never see this kind of a, now become like such an area, especially also some of my building looks like that. But <clears throat> at the trailer park, mm -hmm. <laughs> aesthetic, yeah, do it yourself, yes. and then yes. uh, and then together with this sort of high architecture, mm -hmm. latest trendy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, yeah, when I went there, it was like it was designed for a maximum of architectural variety, like every, uh, all the variety insane. that could be there insane. was made yeah. to be there. Insane, insane. <laughs> of course, uh, these are all collective effort. I mean, we wish nobody has done anything like that. So um, we didn't know how we got. I mean, it's still, I think, it's evolving. Right. So yeah. right. it's, 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 I think, a lot to learn from it. I, that's all I can say. Yeah. It's an interesting place to build Paju, and so seemingly is Jeju Island, uh, yes. which is it's been a, a long a favorite destination of Koreans and others. You've done projects there. What what is what is the advantage of building something on Jeju? Jeju project, what the first Jeju project we did was actually again that against the the faster, bigger mm -hmm. sort of mode. One thing I was interested sort of halfway of my practice, so it's around two thousand seven. I think the project started two thousand seven. 
it's just some time that I was like, okay, we're math studies, but math could mean many things. But initially, we're interested in Seoul, the immediate surroundings. But then, uh, what has happened? This whole inversion of urban and non-urban situation. What happens? This other now 20% population live. So I was actually very curious about doing something, and then we found this kind of, uh, I think, it's quite visionary uh, company. Mm. Which is like a um, Korean Google. Yes, uh, down. Yeah, yes. The, and they decided to move their event, gradually move their entire operation from Seoul to mm. Jeju. Why would they want to do that? It was actually they have they have this their their communication company, so mm. they have this sweet way of telling stories. But then <laughs> one day <laughs> they had a Seoul office. One guy was late. They realized this guy was commuting two hours in the morning. Mm. So then they did their little messenger system. The the founder, the visionary Lee, he was like, "What if we go somewhere else and actually create a new uh, sort of whole new way of living?" Uh, and uh, and I think it's a uh, it's not this suburbia uh, sort of a uh, American story. Right. This one is I think we are in, in up saturated. So it's also they're very big on the whole socially sustainable and many. I mean they're doing more than this sort of a superficial way of approaching now. Everybody talking about the sustainable. Yes, of course. Yeah, but. Um, oh. Um, so they went to Jeju, like a little weekend retreat, camping, brainstorming, and then somehow that evolved where it is now. Uh, nice. But um, there, there is, a, is in a way because it's not last fifty years is all about the migration mm. from here to there eh, to Seoul. Mm, right. Now it's first time I think there is one significant country. I mean, the company that is very well known for the general public mm. making the reverse migration. Right. Uh, do you think that will happen more with more companies, more people to get out of Seoul, to de soulize Korea in some sense? It's eventually, I mean, it's already happening in many ways. Seoul, I think last year was the first time there was a shrinkage in population. Mm. It's a couple of thousand people, I think, if my memory is correct. And, but mostly, yeah, and also there are dropouts. I have two other, three other siblings, and two of them are. Uh, become ex urbans ah. But my brother already came back, actually. Oh, <laughs> Where did they go when they left, though? Ah, he went to down south, uh, mm. like a fishing village, oh, wow. literally. I mean, he's very artistic type, and he's also trained as an architect. Wow. And he's more about this sort of uh, figure, um, mm. sort of alternative uh, cultures and so on. So he's, wow. he's admired for that. But... I mean, there's a lot to do here, but also my sister got married to uh, the painter, and they decide to just raise their kids. I mean, they're also like a lot of people. Reason for for the stick dealing with all this abuse is also for their kids uh, to get the best education. You have to live in certain addresses and so on. Mm -hmm. But they decide to forget it. But so we're just do kind of homeschooling, or I mean, they're not doing homeschooling, but there are a lot of people have that kind of, uh, I don't know, maybe it could be comparable to America. Like There's, there's a bit of that as well, yeah. yeah. I mean, the town was also, I think, it was very much influenced by this whole late 70s Silicon Valley mm. idealism. Mm. I see. Steve Jobs. Yes. And they're like, forget Harvard, we'll just do something, you know. <laughs> In a way that that, but in a way also that in a very Korean twist, huh? mm. they're super well established right. and well paid. And, uh, of course, of course. <laughs> no, but they're, they're they're fantastic. I mean, they're mm. I mean we're doing our way, of course. So mm. uh, there are many influences, but it's a very unique, and I'm glad to engage that process and been absorbing. Yeah. They're already like three. By the time we opened the building two years ago, they're already like three couples married. Oh, oh right. somehow happened to be. Jeju girls and Korean, I mean, Seoul, huh. ex Seoul uh, guy, and yeah, they're, they keep evolving. Yeah. Mm. They just finished another building, so mm. we'll see. Yeah. Are there other cities in Korea that interest you, that you find stimulating places to go? I mean, I was telling you before, I just came back from Busan, yeah. which foreigners seem to like more than Koreans do, but are there are there other Korean cities that are too very interesting? I think it has to be interesting, maybe. But I think every that's an interesting question because now every, especially after this whole decentralizing attempt from the uh, late and the mid 90s, then you have this kind of regional government sort of have these autonomies. They all try to be interesting, so they all come up with the rock festivals. Yes. 
Apple, Bill something. Apple or something or something about the ginseng or <laughs> <laughs> the, you know? and every little region has like this kind of pathetic museums and <laughs> parks and like this Bilbao attempt mm -hmm. um, but that shouldn't be the way to do it I think mm -hmm. we again so many mistakes and simple things has been done over the last 20 years mm -hmm. with that uh, sort of a climate but um, I think I mean obviously there are some uh, amazing um, the difference has to be much more accentuated mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. But I think the problem is that they all try to be so or some so yeah. they try to apply sa same formula. Right, uh, they're imitating. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Up what the success success has done. Uh, the, I mean, previous success, uh, the successful case has been done. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, now here in Seoul, we're sitting in Itaewon, where you have the office of mass studies, and Itaewon you've described as the center of Seoul, but also a void in the center of Seoul. A void used to be 10 years ago, not anymore. Yes, it's not a void now. It was a void, and that brought you here, though, didn't it? Why? Um, brought, uh, I mean, the, the way I decide, I have to talk about it again? Well, uh, you can say it in different terms, but uh, what I want to know specifically is why, why does the concept of a center that is also a void, why did that interest you enough to open up an office? Here, right here. Uh, I think it's, 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 a, it's a nice idea, no? Sure. I mean, I like the sound of it too. But yeah. what what benefits does it have? A hurricane or something. Right. Uh, uh. And it is an international area, which, as you say, you know, you have international experience. You does it, it does it help you maintain an international perspective to be in the most international part of Seoul? It was a lot of it was a practicality. Hmm. I was I, I wasn't really interested in part of this uh, massive middle class uh, area. Right. So I mean the rest of the soul, right. but also um, yeah, it was practical. I, I mean I tend to like various kind of different food. I mean mm -hmm. this is where all this. Right. You have Nigerian restaurant, Indians, you know. Now it become like this family theme park uh, <laughs> uh, every weekend, which is just astounds me so quickly. But um, yeah, there's there's many many reasons. That, uh, I mean, I, also I think it was interesting that it was just followed by our uh, the the being rooted here. Just so many people interested. Mm. So I think it was mm. sort of inevitable. Uh, what are your favorite foreign foods to eat in Seoul? I would say I eat Japanese food a lot. No, oh, yes. Because Korea is the second best Japanese food country. <laughs> I yeah, I, I, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Mm. What else? Um, I go to Thai food. Uh, usually, I tend to stick with it. Yeah, foreign, uh, the Asian, Asian food, mm -hmm. Chinese. Yeah. The Korean food in Rotterdam could not have been very good. You was there any Korean? Was there? I, I'm, I'm saying, I suppose, so I imagine. Restaurant. It's called Koreana, so oh, there is yes. no competition. Oh. So practically, you could be selling anything, and um, yeah, get away <laughs> being Korean. I mean, it was not that bad, but oh. I, yeah, I, I would, I, I was actually going to more, and also these things are so hopelessly upscale, right? Right, uh, that's true. Uh, so. Yeah, it be, mm -hmm. it's like a little, again, uh, exotic uh, place. You know, mm -hmm. this, uh, mm -hmm. uh, As I said at the beginning, you received the Golden Lion at the Venice Biennale for the Korean Pavilion. Tell me what brought about the idea to do what you could to bring North and South Korea together in this pavilion. It was, it was uh, quite... Uh, evident uh, that I had no choice, actually. Mm -hmm. because that was the obvious subject. It was because it was the first time the curator of the entire Biennale come up with this challenge, mm. which was called Absorbing Modernity from 1914 until 2014. Mm. So if you know the history, yeah. a little bit about Korean Peninsula, I mean, it was one country, beginning of colonial period, yeah? mm -hmm. this division had uh, been the last 69 years, so mm -hmm. I, it would make sense to just bring out the heart of the story. Mm -hmm. so, you know. mm -hmm. And it's, of course, a challenge to, it's a challenge to get any contribution of any kind from across that border, so how did you handle the situation of, of evoking North Korea when it's difficult to access anything about North Korea. Yes, um, yeah, so it was, uh, we started because again, thanks to Rem Koas who started the, the whole uh, position year before than usual. So we, I ended up uh, having a 15 months of preparation time. Mm. And um, 
I we were once our proposal was my proposal was accepted. Uh, my proposal contained two scenarios: mm -hmm. uh, Plan A and Plan B. Mm -hmm. And the Plan A was, of course, uh, we love to do um, um, sort of significant historic exhibition um, by both Koreans. Mm -hmm. And what it took, I mean, what encouraged me was that uh, it was uh, the 15 month ago was. Um, Last year, March, so now it's 14 months ago. I mean, like, what is it, 16 months ago, is it? Uh, anyway, um, it was the beginning of the new presidency. Mm -hmm. And because the, the one before really didn't do a good job with the North Korean situation, it really turned the clock back to mm -hmm. 20 years ago or something, just way before Sunshine policy time. So, uh, and she mentioned something that uh, it was pretty clear that she wanted to encourage at least cultural side or more about the humanitarian ways and I mean so I kind of see the positive sign there mm -hmm. also but also for the fact that the North Korean young leader was a pretty early on at the time I mean now looking back so much more happened mm -hmm. and then with the Japanese uh, Abe uh, mm -hmm. Prime Minister that was also beginning of his term so it's mm -hmm. I just thought thought that it was an interesting moment that actually hope for mm -hmm. some positive dynamism between mm -hmm. those uh, this area it's, uh, these countries because mm -hmm. it's always not about no no sense as Korea alone right, right. so um, that was my kind of naive and almost uh, megalomaniac uh, oh, oh. wish to actually establish so, right. and then why didn't anybody thought of this because architecture is such a fantastic uh, medium to understand unknowns Right, because mm. it's always have this kind of a it's a real experience, and, but it also doesn't involve with the verbal language, right. often. Right, but it's it's a powerful thing. Never, nevertheless, you understand it through these physical structures and so on. And that's how I uh, choose. I mean, enjoy being being in my profession. I travel around the world, and you know, I get so many clues just by looking at buildings mm. right? and cities and so. On, right. Mm. So um, yeah, and then that was very exciting. But um, we so. Until last December, so like six months before the opening, we were quite. I was quite set on um, doing Plan B and Plan A. So sending uh, our letters through, of course, mediators because I cannot directly come. Uh, so there are a lot of Europeans, ambassadors, cultural institutes, uh, Wete Institute, Germans, uh, also the museum director who brought previously from uh, uh, four years ago from National Museum of. Mm. Pyongyang collection to Vienna. There's several mm. people also. There's an EU. Uh, I had a contact person in between to the U North Korean uh, counselor of UN in New York and so on. And uh, it didn't uh, quite uh, go further. It, 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 there's one point moment that it was we were very close mm. uh, setting up a schedule and where to meet uh, in China, what city, how many people and so on. But uh, it was actually uh, not a coincidence that it really kind of in sync with the, the mm. larger uh, the tension yes. or uh, ups and downs of these two Koreas actually. Right. So uh, uh, it was an interesting process because it's um, it almost it has we oscillated between plan A and B mm. because somehow naturally you know we went to Italian ambassador actually near here and he was very enthusiastic because he's one who deals with both Koreas because right. they don't have an embass embass um, embassy there mm. so he travels through China and he goes quite often mm. so he was like he helped us out sent you know the delivering letters but also he recommended hey there's a very interesting uh, Italian photographer who had a solo show in Pyongyang but also in South Korea mm. so it's like he become uh, later uh, the, our Plan B uh, entries, right. and then certain point one of the artists, like I mean not artists, architect, the Canadian uh, architects become a liaison between this UN uh, counselors and us. Mm -hmm. So it was actually we was it wasn't like a typical curatorial process. It was mm -hmm. a lot more uh, yes. um, actually um, involved process. Right. So we were well, we really didn't plan what how we got to that uh, sort of a the, the final result i mean which i still see it as a process mm. and in a way it's kind of a interesting new uh, beginning also mm. uh. and finally if reunification comes tomorrow i mean are you thinking about what interesting things could be built on the other which in in the rest of the 
whole country again when it becomes whole again? Of course, I'm an architect, mm -hmm. but I mean the word re 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 reunification is uh, now sort of a really uh, questionable mm. word. The word itself, uh, yeah, because it's it's so open ended. I mean, of course, it's like we have song about it. I mean, there's some peaceful moment. North and South Koreans they sing this "Our Wish is Reunification," and mm. I mean, of course, eventually. But what form it takes? Mm. Is that a German way? Absorbed, mm. absorptive way, or it, depending on who's saying yes. it, it implies so many other things. Right. So I'm very uh, careful about using the term because it right. could be completely misinterpreted. I think it. I think it should have a smaller steps and mm. some gradual acceptance and um, peaceful coexistence. Coexistence. Mm. Yeah. I, I don't. I don't. I don't. Uh, it's. It's really a. Uh, Let's see. I mean, we have to be very careful. Uh, right. Yeah, but uh, yeah, of course, uh, I love to visit, mm. and I think it's as a as a subject. I think it's a fascinating case of cultural studies. I think it really need to be understood. Right? Mm. It's like we have practically. I mean, it, it could, we we can say five thousand years of history, or when you talk about uni, un, unified single state, it's a Korea dynasty, mm. which is ten centuries ago. Right. So we, of course, we have, we have our own very unique um, languages, even alphabet invented 500 years ago, food and, and so on. Right. It's like it's like a twin separated at birth, right. and see what happens after 70 years, you know. Right. And of course, arch I mean, for me, arch as an architecture, I mean, I'm not an expert, but through this experience, I, I've discovered some really fascinating things, like you know how they, you know, those twin stories they separate when they meet. They're like they're both really good at soccer. Yes. <laughs> I think but they have course, things in common. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, it's there's certain things really go beyond the ideologies and right. the, the the things that cannot sort of uh, describe in this political mm -hmm. economic terms. But uh, mm -hmm. I think it's uh, uh, it should it should we should continue somehow. Yeah. Yeah. The, the word uh, so the word reunification aside, do you look forward to the day when North and South Korean architects can work together? No, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. There's a lot to do. I think it's also there. There could be a very unique sort of a collaboration opportunities. Yeah. Yeah. I've been speaking here in Seoul, South Korea, in the Itaewon office of Mass Studies. The firm of my guest today, architect Min Sok Cho. Thanks so much. Thank you so much, Colin. Pleasure. The pleasure's all mine. This has been Notebook on Cities and Culture. I've been Colin Marshall. You can keep up with the internationalists, cultural creators, and observers of the urban scene on the show at colinmarshall.org. Thanks. And special thanks to all the backers of Notebook on Cities and Culture's Korea tour on Kickstarter. Adam Hartzell, Aidan Nullman, Alfred Lee, Andy Cooney, Angus Gordon, Bala Chenupati, Cam Smith, Chin Music Press, Dan Caraselli, Danny, Deborah Smith, Emmett Ferriger, Humberto Grant, Ian Plosker, Ismail Kennessy, Jackie Gast, Jay Chang, Jeffrey Davis, James DeVito, Jonathan Filbert, Josh Paget, Kimberly Hahn, Manvir, Mark Hines, Matthew, Matthew Workman, Maureen Kincaid Speller, Monica Eck, Michael Fransky, MJ Pritchett, Patrick O'Flaherty, Patrick Park, Piers Rippey, Robert Salzberg, Samuel Hansen, Sean Brown, Themistocles Chacrusis, Thomas Unterberger, Timothy Dobbs, and Wayne Wright.